Okay, hi, question 249. Um, again, I'm sure you've read this question. There's sort of two parts to this. There's two parts to this, and you want to be careful that you don't mix them up. I'm, I'm sure you won't. There's a whole discussion about pricing where we look at the, um, the pricing models we learned. You get given that in the exam, the P price, the sort of the selling price of a product is equal to its sort of maximum selling price, if you like, A um, minus um, minus BQ, and we'll see that. And then marginal revenue is equal to A minus 2BQ, you get given that. And then we also deal with costs. And then we use so two completely different scenarios. And there's just being really awake to that. So let's go through Let's go through this. So what do we have here? So we have a scenario where we're giving these costs and we're told that, oh, hello, you need to make these, and these are all the costs involved, and they would like you. And I, I, again, like I say, this is revision. So you've read this, you've tried it, and you're just using mine to confirm learning. You're using this to kind of test it. And so this says that use the high-low method. What is the total variable cost um, per per unit? So let's just do that. Let's let's just go back to the high-low method. I'm going to open up a blank spreadsheet um, just because of the way my and you make sure you have your own screen open so you can see the question. So I, I have my textbook open. That's what I'm going to use. And then you can then um, um, sort of work from there. Okay, great. So what do they tell us? So we have here that we're told that in order, it tells us to use the high-low method. So I'm just going to go with that. Well, I'll, I'll it's, and the high-low method tells us to take the, 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 um, the, infa I'm just going to, oops, oh, sorry. Yeah. Let me do that. I'll sort of draw that and draw that. So this is what we sort of have. This is a scenario. This is what we're talking about here. We're saying that um, when you make 2,000 or 200,000 units, your, well, it's the total cost I want. And the total cost, of course, 200,000 units is 2.4 million plus 1.2 million plus 1.4 million, if you like. And that brings us to eight zero. Three, five, yes. So that's five million. In effect, that's five million. And then it says use the high low method. So I'm going to go all the way to 350,000 350, units and then find out what its own relevant cost is. And its own relevant cost is the 4200 zero, zero, plus the 2100 zero, zero, plus the 1850. Zero, and then when I add all these together, I will have 0, 5, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 8 is 11, 1, 5, 7, 8, 8, 1, 5, 0. So 8.15 million, in effect. I could shorten that to that. So the high-low method pretty much says that, I'm, I, as you should remember, what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to look for is that with every <clears throat> unit I produce, what is the increase in cost? What is the increase in cost? That's what I'm trying to find out. So I kind of do it as one big, massive jump. And so I ask the question that um, with unit, my unit increases, which is 350,000 minus 200,000, <clears> what is the change of basically 8.15 million minus 5 million in effect and divide those two things together? So let's do that very quickly. So we have um, 8. 150, 8150 minus 500. Yes, 8.8. 8, yeah, I'm sorry. It's 15 minus 5 minus 5 is equal to this times um, 315. So I'm just going to stick with that that I have here, um, 315. And then I'm going to say 350 minus 200, which is 150. 315. And 3150 divided by by 150. Yes, so 3150, sorry, 3.15 million 
if you like, but I'm just going to say 3150 divided by 150. So I can, I'm going to remove the one, they just call it 3150. I mean, really, in effect, this is what I have, right? I was just trying to look for some kind of shortcut to do this. So 3.15 million divided by 150,000. By the time you do all this, if you like, you will have 21 pounds. And that's the first, that's the first thing. So be, uh, that was a, that was number one. Right. So let's, um, create a new spreadsheet then it tells us now to calculate the total fixed um, to, to calculate the total fixed cost so I will now um, create a new slide and then go straight into that so now I know my variable cost is 21 I'll just pick any of them I'll pick the first one I'm going to pick the 200,000 um, units and apply it to that so um, if my if my total cost is 5 million and my variable cost is 21. So that means that my total variable cost is 21 times 200,000, which is 4.2 million. And therefore, my fixed element, the fixed element here is the 5 million minus the 4.2 million, which is 0 0.8 million, which is 800,000. Right. So that's number two. That's number two. And the answer is A. So for, for question one, for question one, the answer was D. And for question two, the answer was A. OK, great. And let's then carry on. And then we now have um, question. Yes. Yeah, so question three, we now move away from costing into pricing. Comple so we now move away. So we now kind of have to come back to uh, we're not looking at pricing in effect. And so they're fundamentally, it's in your, you get given this in the exam, the relationship between price and so basically the demand curve. So this is now what we're looking at here. So we're looking at this being A and B is the change in price, if you like, with, by how much do we need to reduce price if we want to sell an additional unit? Now that's what we're looking at here. That's what B is. So P is equal to A minus B Q. That's what we're ultimately um, trying to to do. That's the, to understand this relationship. The question says, if the marginal cost is twenty one, what is the optimal selling price? So we'll come to that. But let's just find this. Let's just understand this relationship a bit better. So if a if p if price is equal to a minus b q, we're told in the question that um, we're told that for every if you go back to them, I think I should actually just to show go you but go back and show you where it is. I'll come back to this. We're told in the question that um, here we are you know very clearly in the question that but um, has revealed that we have a price of 60 pounds annual demand will be 250,000 units thank you however for every two pound increase in price demand falls by 2,000 units so let's now go back I can comfortably come back here now and I can now see that movement so it's telling me that every time price falls by two pounds, units increase by 2,000 2, units. So in effect, therefore, my change in price over change in quantity, if you like, because I'm always trying to find what is the change. I'm basically trying to find the change in price when there's, when there's just a change in one <clears throat> How much would price have to change by um, for us to have a change in one unit, if you like, in one unit? That's ultimately what I'm trying to find. What is that movement? In exactly the same way we were doing it for costing, when we're looking here, when you have cost, what, what does cost imp increase by when you have a change in one when you make another unit? In the same same way, how much would price have to fall by when you have a change in one unit? And so we now have, if you like, change in price of two pounds divided by 2,000 units, which leads us to 0 0.001. So I now know that my B is equal to 0 0.001. That's the first step. So um, in terms of an equation, I now have P is equal to A minus 0 0.001 Q. And that's, that's, just, that's just brilliant. So I have that, um, first of all, to start with. Typically, you, you would get, a, sometimes you might get a table and you might have to apply this um, using simultaneous equations. You get two scenarios for you to plug out 
Um, to be honest, we found B. I mean, there, there, there's a number of ways we could do this. Thankfully, they've given this. Sometimes in the, they'll give you a table and you'd have to use simultaneous equations to find A and B. But they've given it to us in a roundabout different way. You know, it, it's just reacting. And the questions we did in class highlight where we would have a simultaneous equation to find A and B. But now we are also told that, um, in this picture, we're also told that, well, hey guys, at a price of 60 pounds, you're able to sell 250,000 units. We're told this in the question, if you just go back to it. So it means that I can find A now, if you like, on this curve. So there is a point somewhere where I'm selling 250,000 units, and I know what the price is. And now I know what the rate of change is. So I literally have to apply this. So I know that 60 is equal to A minus 0 0.001 times 250,000. I know this. This is, I mean, this is what the equation is telling me. So therefore, 60 is equal to A minus, um, it's basically A minus 250. And therefore, A is equal to 60 plus 250, which brings me down to 310. So now I know what A is. So I'll just go into a new slide. Yes, these ones are all a bit longish, but they're, they're worth it. So I go into a new slide, and now I have um, a scenario where I can now pull out my full equation and therefore know that clearly that P is equal to 310 minus 0.001x, or Q, actually. I'll probably say Q. I'll put this as Q. This I know. Now, the exam tells us as well that the marginal revenue is equal to 310 minus twice this thing, which is 0.002q. And in this example, I'm told that, oh, um, the marginal cost is equal to 21. And we know at the optimal point in terms of trading, right, the marginal revenue and the marginal cost are exactly the same. So marginal revenue and marginal cost are exactly the same. Therefore, 21 at that optimal point is equal to 310 minus 0.002q. And then I have to now somehow find my way around this. So that means that um, whatever is 0.002q is equal to 310 minus 21. 310 minus 21 is equal to 289. So that means the 0.002q is equal to 289. That means that q is equal to um, 289. Um, divided by 0 0.002, 289 divided by 0 0.002 is equal to 144,500. And so I now know what that quantity is at the optimal point. Wonderful. I found my quantity at the optimal point. Well, the final question is really asking, well, what's the selling price for this quantity? What's the selling price for this quantity? And I know already that P is equal to 310 minus 0.001q. This is the, the final question always tends to come back to this p. And so what do I do? Literally 310 minus 0.001 times 144500. That's what I have. And 0 0.001 here. I mean this is this is a nice one. This is just 144.5, um, isn't it? So it's 310 minus 144.5, which gives you 165.50. So there we are. <clears throat> cool, great stuff. So um, that's 3, and that takes us to B. 3 is B. 3 is B. And then the next two questions are kind of, the um, 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 what's the word? Um, theoretical. Let's just look at them very quickly. And let's go here, and then we have here. Okay, great. So the first one says, um, the sales director is unconvinced that this is the, that the optimal is the correct charge, correct 
one to charge at the initial launch, he believes that a high price should be charged to take advantage of those customers who prefer a high price for the product. Okay. Which two of the following are true? So he's suggesting definitely it was referred to as a market skimming, isn't he? A market skimming strategy. Um, typically, Apple products, products that you have early adopters, people who want the product and just will pay anything for it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's what he wants. A market, that's what he's suggesting. The strategy pursue people for new and different. That's true. That's true. So definitely one and two. Where products have a long cycle, life cycle, the pr I'm not, no. Typically, remember with life cycles, you want to spread the cost and get the real cost. It's going to be here for some time. And there is no barrier in the case of entry for ALG. Um, you know what? Let me just go back and read what they do. Um, no. Um, they launch, they're launching a new, into the new market um, given high levels of cost. So they're just launching normal, um, a, a normal product. So just looking at this question again, I'm sorry, they're saying that there is no barrier of entry. Uh, this isn't true. Um, it's a new innovative product, so they're working hard to protect it. Um, <clears throat> there are barriers. There are always barriers of it, um, if you like, to entry. Um, especially when you have products like that where a lot of research and investment has gone into it. Um, so there are there are barriers of entry. I mean, it's an open question, actually. It's quite vague. So your answer is A, because it's it's the first two as, as the strongest answers there. Um, then it says that ALG's game is truly unique and can only be it's a unique characteristic one can only be used in conjunction with another one of another business product characteristic two and students are entitled to a small discount so from the discount student one that's price discrimination um, unique market skimming and uh, in conjunction complementary product pricing so one two and four takes us to C cool great stuff okay see you in question 250